What's up YouTube? Austin coming at you with Vaporleaf.com. Today we're going to be talking about the Wismic RX-2 Three. This is a device that's really interesting actually. It's, it takes a very innovative design that actually will grow with you as your vaping experience and vaping needs grow. So let's go ahead and dive down in and take a closer look at this puppy. All right, here we are down and close with the Wismec RX-2-3. So let's go ahead and open up the box real quick here. All right, so we have the device in its full form, and you'll understand what I mean about that in just a second here. We'll go ahead and pull up the foam here, a little trap door. You're going to get a charge cable. You're going to get your little booklet. It explains everything for you. And then, uh, but why do you need that? That's why I'm here, right? Uh, and then you get this. And this is the hint of why it's called the 2-3. So let's go ahead and take a look at the device here real quick. So you're going to have uh, your fire button, you're going to have a nice large screen that's very similar if not exactly the same as the uh, RX 200S. You're going to have your directional buttons, a charge and update port, have some venting on the sides as well as the bottom. You have your 510 on top and then also on the button uh, on the bottom you have a button. Now this door will not come off unless you press that button. So we'll go ahead and press that button right there and you notice that it just clicks right open there and you just kind of wiggle it open and you can see that there's two battery sleds right there and one in the door. So what you can do is you can either run this with three batteries or with two batteries. So what we'll do here, let me go ahead and grab some batteries here real quick. So if you're just going to run it in two batteries, you'll go ahead and throw your two cells in, make sure you have them the right way, which let me pop one of these batteries out here real quick. You can see that it does have the positive and negative indicators, and that will be the same on this side, just reverse since it's wired in series just on uh, the, the inner sled there. So we'll go ahead and pop these guys in here real quick. And then you can just take the two battery door plate, and you'll notice that one side has these little, come on, it's, focus. One side has these plates where one side has these hooks. Come on, focus for me. There we go. See nice little hooks there and then just little flat plates. So what you'll want to do is, I, now I always come in at kind of an angle so I can uh, grab the ribbon there, but once you do that you'll want to hook it right into the top just kind of pinch it there and then what I've been doing is I'll just kind of push up from down here and just pop it right in. Oops. Do, 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 do. There we go. This one's brand new so it's it definitely having a little bit of trouble. There we go. So okay so what we'll want to do here is take the door here slide it right up in there then push up on the bottom and in and it snaps together uh, that is one of the downsides as you just saw it is a little bit hard to get the door uh, on especially when it's brand new it does break in a little bit and makes it much easier to get in and out but you can see that this significantly changes the shape, makes it much smaller. Uh, one of the downsides to this is that it does drop it to 150 watts only. Uh, I do have it set at 165 watts, but I'm sure if I throw my Addy on here, it will drop me to 150 watts. So get that screwed on there. And yeah, it actually dropped me to 112 watts. Let's see if it will let me get up. 
Yeah, so because of the resistance, it is capping me off at 112 uh, watts, which is 6 volts. So it looks like the maximum voltage that you can achieve is 6 volts, though it will hit a maximum of 150 watts if you have the right resistance on there. Um, like I was saying, mine's a 0.32 ohm, so I'll probably do a 0 0.5, 0 0.4, somewhere in that area will allow you to get all the way up to... Uh, 150. Actually, you know what? I'm wrong. Uh, going the other way, if it was a little bit lower, you'd be able to achieve that 150 watts, not higher. Apologize about that. And then, let's say you're getting more into it and you want to go higher in the wattage. You, you, you want to be able to achieve that 200 watts. Now, granted, there's not many people that want to do that, but if you would like to, all that you'll do is, once again, hit the button, pop that off, and then take your third battery, and that'll just slip right into this sled right here, which once again has the positive and the negative indicator. So we will go ahead and pop that in. And once again, we will get those hooks in, kind of press up on it, squeeze it together, and that's all hooked in now. And now you can see that it resembles more of that traditional Rollo shape. And now I will definitely be able to run this where I personally like to up at 165 watts for this atomizer. 165 and it is firing. Go ahead and take that off here real quick. Uh, so this device will have a, a bunch of temp control modes as well. Uh, it, I'm not sure if I mentioned this. The maximum wattage on this is going to be 200 watts. I believe there is an update out uh, to 250 watts. Don't quote me on that, but I believe there is. So uh, at the moment, it will cap out at the 200 watts. But it also comes with a uh, with various temp control modes. So all that we'll do is we'll hit the fire button three times. One, two, three. And you'll see that the VW up there starts flashing. And then we'll just go ahead and use this button to cycle through. So we have temperature nickel, temperature titanium, temperature stainless steel. Then you'll have three TCR modes. And uh, to get through those, it has one on there right off the bat. So we'll go ahead and hit the other button there. That'll drop it to the M1. Not sure how much this is focusing, sorry. And then you'll be able to cycle through M2, M3, and then back to M1. Uh, and then left, you'll be able to adjust your wattage as well, and that's in any of the temp control modes, as well as be able to locking uh, to lock your resistance. Then it'll get back up to, uh, oh, apparently it'll let you do something with your amperage as well. Hold on just a second here. Figure that out. Ah, so you can change between amperage, puffs, time vaped, and then back to amps. Uh, so honestly, I would just leave it on amps. That's really kind of the important number. But if you would like to see how long you've been vaping or how many puffs you've taken, you can change that as well. Go ahead and take that back off. Now, TCR, which I have talked about in a few other videos, it stands for Temperature Coefficients of Resistance. So how to set it, which is uh, essentially a custom temp control mode. So to set that though, because all of them are preset at 120, what we'll do is go ahead and turn the device off, one, two, three, four, five, turns it off, and then you'll go ahead and hit the fire button and this button right there. So press and hold that until the TCR menu pops up. Uh, let me click that again. So you have M1, M2, and M3. Whichever one you want to adjust, just go ahead and hit the fire button, and then you're able to adjust it. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave a uh, note of, in the description about what you want to set this to, whether you're in nickel, titanium, nickel iron, stainless steel, any of that. Uh, I'll, I'll, everything that it uh, mentions in the book, I'll go ahead and uh, put that in the description to use as reference. So once you set that, you'll be able to turn the device on and then your TCR, M1, M2, M3, whatever you set those to will be essentially a, a, a custom temp control for what you want. Which, personally, I've found that it works a little bit better than just the presets. So, most people don't use it, but I really do enjoy it. Other than that, this is a very simplistic device. 
If you press and hold both of the directional buttons, you can lock. Uh, you can do a key lock, which means that you can't adjust it, but you're still able to fire the device. There's no atomizer on there. Uh, and you are still able to change your modes as well. So let me get back to variable wattage there. And we'll go ahead and unlock that. Hold on just a second. My memory's about to run out. I'll be back in literally no time for you guys. Okay, and we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, continuing on, if you press the fire button and the left button at the same time, well, it, or this button, uh, it's the left button for me, but I'm looking at it wrong, so fire button and right button. Um, if you press and hold both of those buttons at the same time, it'll pull up logo on and off. Now, what that is, get that a little bit closer so you can see the screen there. Uh, what that is, is you can actually upload a custom logo to this, and that will display right up in this area instead of the variable wattage and the wattage I believe. It, when you start adjusting it, it will pop back up, but then when it's just in standby or when you're firing it, it will show the logo right there. And then vice versa, if you press and hold the fire button and the left button, it'll do stealth. Now, for any of you that don't know, stealth when you're adjusting it, it will still pull up all your information. But when you go to actually fire it, uh, which let me get an atomizer on there, it will actually drop the screen to darkness. And it is firing, but nothing's on the screen there. To get out of that mode, it's simply doing the same thing of hitting the fire button and the left button at the same time until it says stealth off, and you're good to go. So, fairly straightforward menu, and it's a great device, guys. So let's go ahead and dive back up, and we will finish this up. All right, so that was the Wismec Relo RX23. Uh, like I said, it is a device that grows with you. So it can get all the way up to 150 watts or 6 volts, whichever one comes first in this case. And then if you ever need any more power than that, you can go ahead and put the larger door on there, lose a little bit of the compact size, and then you're able to achieve 200 watts. And like I said, I do believe there is an update to go all the way up to 250 watts. Not that many people get up there, but it gives you the ability. Now, one kind of snag that I would like to mention, though, <coughs> pardon me, is that when you're running it in the two-battery mode, and then you decide to go up to the three-battery mode, you shouldn't just buy one more battery and throw it in there. You want to make sure that they're married. So go ahead and buy three new batteries. Keep the two batteries for if you ever want to use just the two, like if you're using a tank or something and you want to have the more uh, sleek, compact uh, size to it instead of the larger shape. And so you'll have those two batteries for the two plate, and then you'll have the three batteries for the full size that you can get all the power out of. So you want to really make sure to marry your batteries. I, I know I'm sounding like a broken record there a little bit, but you really want to. Uh, it, y there can be a lot of problems that can be caused with that, and there's so much energy built up in these cells, you really just don't want to mess with it. So... It's a fantastic device, guys. If you are looking for something to kind of get into that high power, but you're not really sure you want something that large just yet, go ahead and get this device. It will grow with you. It's a fantastic device, as the Relos have always been. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and take a quick vape off of this so you can see what she's doing here. And we'll go ahead and finish this up. Plenty of vapor production. You guys have a fantastic day. And oh, take a step back there real quickly. If you like the video, make sure to hit that like button. And for all the latest and greatest videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Like I always like I already said, guys, you have a wonderful day. Bye now.